Look how oily this thing is ratty, but for some reason, you guys like this thing. And you keep emailing me, trying to buy it. I didn't have it together yet. And odds are, I'm gonna ruin it anyways, and then probably want too much money for it. Dan here, TSP Shop. So we're working on this uh, 57 Chevrolet 210 hardtop, clean, one owner, uh, no rust. Uh, body filler though, fair bit of it. Anywho, where we left it last, I'll give you a quick synopsis summary. We've done a pile of rust repair with all sorts of patch panels, which everyone's letting me know I should have put full quarters on it, because I'm an idiot. But if I would have put full quarters on it, then people would have said I've gone Hollywood and I spent too much money. So, you know what? We're going to piss off just half the internet today. But on the next build, we'll piss off the other half. So don't feel like you're left out. So we got patch panels in. we got floor pan in. Everything's just tacked together. Other side's kind of uh, did up. We've got some decent doors on it. Fenders over there. Hoods. Oh, hoods right there. I love this hood. I can't wait for it to go on. It's got an ugly hood scoop on it perfect everyone's telling me i should paint this thing and all that sort of stuff so uh, we'll do a quick vote and i'll probably do whatever the hell i want in the end which is kind of what we do i, I think i want to keep it ratty but we'll see maybe something will take over i really like the so i keep calling it patina which is maybe not the correct word for this car it, it is 100 percent pure garbage but uh, i mean you just you can't recreate the moss like that that's years of improper storage Anyway, so we did all that work, and then I was like, okay, great. Let's put a motor transmission on this thing. I ended up getting a free 283, which we worked on on the last video, which was a absolute fail. There is no compression on that thing, and we will take it apart. I'm not going to lie. I do want to know what's wrong with it. Is it a head gasket? Is it the valves? Is it the rings? Who knows what? And uh, maybe we'll get it running just for fun. But uh, that's not happening today. I ordered a pile of parts for this thing for the front end and this is where it's going to seem funny because new stuff is cheaper than rebuilding the old now uh i never quite looked at this typically oh yeah this one's submashed all the lower control arms always get beat to hell i haven't had a tri-5 yet that's uh that's not but uh, anywho versus changing all the bushings because these are clearly just sacked right out um these are all riveted ball joints those are all factories bolted at the bottom so it's that lower ball joints maybe but you know it's beat it's old it needs love and honestly this is where you know we'll take a little you know dose of truth with dan here i do prefer rebuilding front ends i feel like they ride better but i've got a 56 chevy wagon out there that i rebuilt the front end with all moog components maybe two years ago and it's got literally 100 miles on it and because it's just been sitting beat the shit they're all cracked and broken and it just pisses me off that that is the quality of junk we're getting these days and i'm sure you guys do as well and and ball joints for this thing is like 50 60 bucks a ball joint plus bushings plus 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 it's just an absolute nightmare so I have found it's cheaper to go on eBay. As you can see here, hopefully my address and all my fears aren't written on this. And uh, get these Chinese uh, control arms. So they come, uh, there's no bushings in them. They're tubular. They have uh, ball joints. They just take tri five ball joints. These are bolt-in. I have heard a lot of people say they are garbage and don't last, which may be the case but i've put these in lots They're, this exact setup is in my uh, nomad and that did 7500 miles this summer and the front's still tight so good enough i also ordered from the same supplier so this is from oh, you guys always ask where it comes from i want to say it's like tom's tri-5 or tom's chevrolet i don't know who but anyways it's just like a reseller on ebay and i got all this stuff a disc brake kit because again i mean this is where i, I can never win but uh, tri five chevrolets four-wheel drum single pot master so that's not a great setup so uh we're gonna upgrade the disc because even drums these days man one drum is like 100 bucks crazy all this stuff together was i want to say it was a thousand dollars canadian plus shipping and maybe some duty so if you're in the usa that's like 750 bucks maybe 
and uh, control arms. We got disc brakes, and they're drilled for whatever reason. Um, I went and got drop spindles. It's got uh, your standard GM single, you know, piston caliper deals, rubber lines, bearings, uh, dust caps, and that's it. So you do have to supply master cylinder, brake booster if you want. We're just going to run, uh, I think I got one, just like a, a regular master uh, disc drum deal, and we'll have to plumb it ourselves. But that's down the road a little. We got to get this thing all together. So for 750 bucks, I also got, uh, I did buy some Moog stuff, tie rods, because. You know what this thing even has? Oh, it does have tie rods on it, but I mean, they're junk. Where's the center link for this thing? Oh, yeah. Spare parts. So we're gonna have to re- Oh, I need bushings for that. It, eh. Whatever, we'll do that later. Anyways, we're gonna get this all kind of together. Maybe put the center link in just to set it in there so we can decide how the oil pan's gonna fit on whichever motor we decide to put in. But yeah, I thought we'd just give a quick overview of what we're doing. I paid for all this stuff, full jam retail. So thanks for subscribing and watching the ads. Um, but yeah, I'm going to push the car back. We'll probably suck the front end over, have it kind of cattywampus. Um, this is actually still together because I got to take a thumbnail for that last video yet. So this is, you know, how the sausage is made, right? So you'll probably see me, uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll get that done. We get the front end all together. We can see what we want to do with this motor and ultimately put some sort of motor transmission combo together and get it yarded in this thing. So it'll be a, a pretty quick, fun, easy deal. I don't know if they have this for, uh, well, I would assume Chevelles, Camaros, uh, anything like that. I'm assuming that maybe not this guy, but go on eBay and search the stuff. Super cheap and uh, it'll get you back on the road. It's uh, maybe not the best, maybe you guys don't recommend it, but this is what I want to do. I do want this thing hunkered down low and I do want disc brakes. So the only thing that maybe you could have your leg to stand on is those control arms. They absolutely ride worse. There's no bones about it. A factory Tri-5 Chevrolet rebuilt drives so nice. These have, I wanna say seven degrees of caster in them and the factories have like three to five. So the wheel spins back and forth a lot easier for you manual steering idiots like myself. But uh, the caster on that man, that Nomad, we were cruising the speed limit towing uh, a Bricklin at the speed limit and uh, both hands off the wheel just sailing like it just whoosh, straight down the road so I do enjoy that. Um, like I said we'll get this set up and I'll start showing you how we're gonna take this all apart. It's a little bit different than your standard GM kind of deal but very simple. So the car is up on jack stands on the frame. Um, we are gonna do this a slightly different way. Um, then a lot of you guys have probably done uh, front end disassembly or coil spring, you know, removal and stuff like that. And uh, I learned this by watching a video. Uh, this guy, he's a Canadian guy, old time garage, Rick. He's a good guy. He's getting a little soft in his old age. He used to really kind of let people have it, but now he's, you know, trying to be a responsible human, I guess. Anyway, he's got a whole video on, so if you want to watch that, I recommend it. But instead of, you would typically. Uh, rest the floor jack under the you know lower control arm break a ball joint uh, loosen or, or drop the control arm away it would expand and it'd be fine a little sketchy but overall that's kind of just what you do try fives for whatever reason or that don't work so I made this just now today I, I have I have a clamp I don't know where I've put it but essentially it's a little bottom piece this is five eighths all thread which is excessive and we're gonna run the all thread through the shock mount, or where the shock is, so the shock's out. We're gonna clamp this. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pull the lower control arm up, take the kind of load out of it, or, or hold it, I guess we'll put more load in it. We're then gonna undo the four bolts that hold the lower control arm. We're gonna put a floor jack under it for safety. We're gonna then loosen uh, the nut, essentially expanding the spring. So instead of taking it apart at the knuckle, we're going to take it apart at the lower control arm and it's going to do this. This will also be the same and it'll fold out. We'll get the spring out, two bolts here, and we'll take it off as a lump. Um, 
We will need to take the steering arms, I believe, off, uh, but we'll do that at a later date or maybe later in the video. These are the factory drums because they're still riveted on, so you can actually we could take this off if we wanted to real quick, just with the uh, the one nut and the whole hub and everything will come off. But I'll just show you here, so we'll get dialed together. I typically use a half inch all thread, but the tool you got is the tool you use, right? So we're gonna feed this through just like that. This bar at the bottom I just kind of made, welded up. We're gonna put a nut on the bottom to hold it. This is cut at a funny angle, so I'm not too bright here. Oh, maybe I should have planned this a little better, eh? Oh, well, it's good TV, it's good TV, don't worry. Maybe I'll just put an ad in or something like that right here, you know what I mean? So you guys get to watch that. Oh, this is embarrassing. Hang on. I'll just struggle for a minute here and we'll be right back. Oh, no, I got it. See, I just had to tell myself I didn't have it. So we'll put this on here. You don't want to make sure this isn't going to come off. So give it a little bit of thread. Man, this smells like I'm sitting in a cow pasture. Okay. So now the top side, this is a little excessive amount of all thread, but it'll be fine. You do have to kind of take into account that this is where the suspension is uh, fully extended, right? But we are going to have to tighten it, so we more obviously more thread in. And then as we loose it, we'll need more thread out. But this is definitely more than you need. We're going to take some washers. Oh, that's kind of artsy. Put those down. We're just making kind of like a puller setup, right? Get those a little blast. Spray the threads. And then we'll spin this all the way down. We'll just jump to that right now. Okay, so we got this piece all together. We're going to put a pair of ice grips on just to kind of get it started. So essentially, start cranking down on this. What this is going to do is it's going to load the, uh, the coil spring, right? Yeah. So by doing this, you can undo the lower control arm and it won't explode and kill us. Yeah. Now, pretty simple tightening. When you're loosening, you want to make damn sure you're not loosening uh, like the rod is spinning with the nut and it's loosening on the bottom because that causes death. Uh, let's give this a little bit more, but it should be probably fine. Once you got the load on it. So now we can take our impact and take off the lower control arm bolts. There's four, which are a bit of a hassle to get to, but usually they come out. Get all schwacks, get out these bolts real quick. That's good. Those are a bit of a hassle to get to. They are splined in there, so maybe we'll just leave it for now. Um, okay, now, we should be able to loosen this. Again, making sure the all thread's not doing nothing. Gonna put the floor jack under it for my own protection. And you guys are endlessly in my way. So we want to put it, yeah, the floor jack kind of right under the lower control arm kind of dog bony there. And we'll just let her go. Should be drooping. Which it is. Okay, so it's obviously stuck on those two bolts. 
Give it a schwack ski. Ooh, that's on there. Wow. Holy moly. That is friggin' in there. The back is loose. And the front is not. So, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna result to a bigger hammer real quick. Holy moly. Why is that in there so good? I'll try a bar first before we get the heat out. Of course there's nowhere to crank on it. Usually it's just kind of fall apart. All right, torch it is. There we go. Huh. A friggin' nightmare. Okay. So now that it's easily <laughs> removed. Ah. Let's see if we can get this kind of off these bolts real quick. Okay. So you can see it's kind of wibble wobble. Drop the floor jack down just a little bit. Shouldn't be able to kill us, but you never know. 5 8 rod. Oh yeah, there we go. She's tense. She's strong. Okay. Going in. Okay. So you gotta just kind of walk it out of the bolts, which in this case we're a freaking disaster. This one out. Yeah, okay. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. And as you go, obviously. The spring tension will get easier and easier. Um, at one point I did make a, a socket, like on a pipe, so you could uh, ratchet this or impact it. But you know what? I friggin' hate coil springs. Springs in general, because they'll kill you until you get the load off of them. But. Okay. Drop floor jack a little bit. I'll just work this all the way down until there's literally no load left in it. And then we'll have to uh, probably force the spring out the pry bar. But we'll just get, we went from like deadly to like maimed to, uh, you know, like a purple purple finger, or, uh, finger bruise or something like that, you know what I mean? Okay, so that's basically almost all the load out. Oh no, sorry, we were on the jack. Okay, so the all thread is out. Let's we'll lower it down the floor jack nice and easily. Not bad. Now we just gotta kinda jump on it or whatever we have to do to kinda get that spring out. This is awkward. Okay. 
Chance of death is zero. Ah. Now we just gotta take this off. Wow, that was shocking. Nine times out of ten, those just strip out or something like that. Got that. Let's so get these big washers off, but I love the original stuff as much as you can. It just works. Okay. Got that out. Get the bar. So these are your alignment shims and whatnot. Uh, one side's stuck. Okay. Whew. Frustration. Hold that. Drop that. There we go. Uh, off in a lump. Yeah, we'll probably just leave those on there. Whoo! Okay, see the other side. That was an ugly job. Um, this one I kind of mangled. I might have uh, got a little angry. It, it actually, it was cracked, but I uh, went from a crack to a tear. You know, that's the DD speed shop way. So I'll smash that back, give it a quick weld. I mean, I can weld a washer on there, but we got that all off, so that's fine. So, you know, as you can see, they come off in one piece. They're easy to store like this. Um, the lowers are always beat up, but people are always looking for, you know, miscellaneous or whatever. Or I've done it myself where you buy like a frame or you buy something that's smacked up you want to just put one on to get a roller that's so it'll go in the shed like everything i mean that's the whole that's the whole point of this car shed parts um this one's nice because the, the drum's off but you can see here this is the steering arm and it just bolts on with these two bolts with cotter pins and uh you want the drums off not too dark but just nothing bolt in there super super easy to take off so that's mint um I think what we're gonna do is I'll build the passenger side because it doesn't need any repair and uh, we'll just kind of put it all together. Maybe starting the brakes, it's already kind of 10 o'clock at night, so I know how motivated I will be, but uh, I'd like to kind of keep giving her. So I'll show you, it's gonna be super simple because everything's brand new, hang it all together, put a spring in, clamp it. We'll see if we can just reuse the existing bolts because they are kind of nice. Like I said, the ones that came in the kit it's almost like they're painted gold and they're not great eight because I have stripped them before. I am pretty muscular. I have been eating more, but uh, I feel like the bolts that hold on the front suspension are pretty important. Worst case, we could put it all together and you can just do one bolt at a time and it won't uh, it won't do nothing, right? With the, the load of the spring in it. So I'm going to get stuff unpacked and we'll just, uh, yeah, hang it together. Super easy. Super, super easy. So here's the three pieces. Upper, lower, and the... Uh, the knuckle or the spindle. Uh, I might have misspoke earlier. This is the right side. Sometimes they have the caliper on the front. The Speedway kit usually does. This one has it on the back. And as you can see, um, basically the spindle, instead of being kind of down there, it's just moved up. So these are two inch drop spindles. So the geometry and everything stays the exact same on the suspension, which is nice. 
if you put like drop springs or you heat the springs up, you're just changing where the thing rides in the suspension kind of arc. So this should sit at ride height or whatever, you know, that, that would be right from uh, 1957, other than the wheel will be tucked up a couple of inches. So that's that. They're well built as far as I'm concerned. I mean, they're definitely not a QA1 setup, but uh, they're also not a QA1 price. It does come with this hardware, like I said, so we'll try it out, see what works. The front, the tops do not, but we're literally just gonna like slap them on, slap, slap them up. Stupid two hand. Okay, I might, I might need two hands, but uh, we'll get those on there real quick and uh, just start hanging them together and then spring in. So I'll get the camera on the tripod. Ah! Ouch, oh, sharp. So the top, uh, control arm is on, no problem. I just reused the hardware. I will say the boots that kind of hold the grease and all that, the junk in, they leave something to be desired on these. There's no bones about that. Of course, I don't have a tool. And there's nothing obvious. As I said, this will... Why would they pre-bend the cotter pin? Couldn't just put it in a bag, eh? You gotta... Put it in there. Okay, there we go. Put that somewhere to lose. Nut off. Spindle hour. Nut back on. This would be a perfect time to clean and paint your chassis. If you're the kind of person that cares about that sort of thing. These are drilled and tapped for shocks on the bottom. Of course, the cotter pin is also mangled on this. Why would I think anything different? So they take a standard shock. Everything is stock. And I mean, if you don't like the, what are these? Ball joints? It's getting late. You can tell. Uh, you can just put in whatever you want. Moog, Mevotech. If you got AC Delco money, then good on you. But there we go. Pretty frickin' simple. Uh, the next thing we'll do is put in the spring. Typically around a big bolt. I don't know if I have one. Just kind of as a safety measure. And then your standard, like, GM, Malibu Chevelle, you know, whatever kind of disc brakes fit on this thing. We'll just make sure this is kind of on there so it's not going to blow apart on us. We're, we're safe here at Dee Dee's Beach Shop. There you go. All brand new stuff. Um, that bumps up does nothing, so that's fine. It has it though, that's all that really matters. China. So, already losing cotter pins. Take these hard hardware out. This has, it's a bit of a weird setup. They're all like this, they have a little, like this dog bone piece that comes off. For some reason, um, and actually it dawned on me, these lower dog bone, whatever you want to call them, the lower control arm shaft, it's thicker than the factory one. So you can't use the factory bolts. So that's a bummer. Now we're gonna fiddle with the spring. The spring, obviously it has this little pigtail. It'll fit in a little pocket uh, in the top of the chassis. And then the bottom here has a little rubber piece. I don't know if it's, oh, yeah, I can spin. So you'll put the top one in to kind of eyeball the bottom, line it all up and go from there. Uh, they do sell um, drop springs or lowering springs. I'm pretty sure Tri Fives, the springs are like constant rate. So if you just cut a coil off, it will, uh, it's a, that's all you're really getting is you're going to get a shorter factory spring, I believe. I've done it before on something. I forget what. One of the Tri Fives to lower it. And you know what? Google it or go on uh, you know, YouTube. I'm sure there's a thing. It's either like a, I think it's two to one, but don't take me for it. Like if you cut off two inches, you drop one inch. Or if you cut off one inch, you drop two inches, one or the other. So you want to make sure of that. 
Um, I, I think I'm just gonna do this and it should be okay. We'll just find our little home of where this wants to be. Where is it? Oh God. So the spring, okay. So it wants to kind of go in something like this ish now we're gonna have to do everything in reverse so this has to move a little and this is where it gets a little frustrating so you got to kind of have the bottom lined up and then the top lined up and screw around hate your life and go from there but it will work out at some point oh god Lord Jack. So, same thing, we're gonna put just a little bit of, oh man, somebody should clean up in here. If that nice craft services meal, you'd expect them to jam the rest. Okay, hang on, ah, there we go. So we'll put just a little bit of, a little tension. So now we can kind of play with our spring, get it aligned. We'll then run the all thread through yet again which we can actually do that right now, it's kind of irrelevant. Hold the spring in. And then we're just gonna tighten it. Yowza. Look at that, does that look good? There's a problem. Oh. So right now, obviously the suspension is all the way extended, which really it will not be. Yeah, I mean, unless you're like, you know, set of railroad tracks or something like that. But the problem is this won't spin or turn all the way. Now, as you know, you put load on the car, Obviously this little bit here will kind of line up with a little bit of a crease there. Well, right now it's jamming. So we don't have, you know, full steering. It's not bad. It's probably 50% or maybe a little more, but we don't want that. So we'll have to mark it and then ultimately just auger out a little bit. And this is the problem with the Chinese kits. There's zero instructions. It may say that in the instructions if it had some, and maybe there are some actually on the website. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say there are none. It didn't come with any. Usually they're in the pack with the brake stuff, but I don't know. Obviously it's a bunch of miscellaneous things. It did come in three separate orders, even though it was one, <laughs> one thing, but way she goes. Um, as for, I mean, the design, it is the exact same as a factory style, like the, the shape of the control arm is all the same. The spindle is what's different. So yeah, we'll take some meat out of it and see what it is like. Just a little, an eighth inch slit. 
will be fine. But I'm not doing that tonight because I'm tired. I locked it early together like an idiot. So I will put the spring back, take a spring out and uh, take all the, the hardware out. I mean, it actually was okay, but while I'm up tomorrow, maybe I'll just get some, you know, new hardware that I know is proper American grade eight, just cause it is, you know, the front suspension and uh, we'll go from there. So it should be very simple. The brake should go on very easy. I mean, it looks like a standard brake job at this point. I'll, I'll probably have to, I don't know how we're going to get the arm on there. There wasn't any hardware, I don't think, for nuts and bolts. So maybe just reuse the... Yeah, I guess. That's just brake stuff. And then this is the box that the <laughs> spindles came in. So we may need some hardware or reuse the stuff. But this is threaded. So... Maybe she's a factory things and thread it in. That's the end of it. I don't know. I would have assumed the factory stuff would have been fine thread though. I'll have to do a little, little research here. Just see if maybe we're missing a thing or two or if there's a instruction online. I'll go from there. But I'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll get this figured out. Sure looks good in all the shittiness. What's happening guys? It's a new day. Um, I did... Do a little bit more work on this thing last night after I stopped filming, so it's just kind of frustrated. And the more I think about it, the more I think it's just kind of a victim of circumstance. So as I said before, this suspension it was it was rubbing, right? So I ended up doing a little bit of clearancing in there with the grinder, which I, I think is fine, simply because these things are so freaking beefy. We'll just do a little a little tutorial. Um so you can see. Like this is where, you know, the, the ball joint and all that's gonna kinda go. So just remember that size compared to the stock deals, they're I mean much, much smaller. I mean they're a couple inches wide. So I just took a little bit of the casting out. It's really not that bad. So now it does turn lock to lock. Now, here's the other thing. I actually believe the problem is, well. You have to pretend, well not pretend, this is what happens, the suspension goes, it goes in an arc, right? So it's all the way down, and it kind of does that, is a little bit over-exaggerated. But obviously when it's all the way at the bottom, it's going to have some bind. Now really, this should never actually go this low. This bump stop's not doing anything, and it's missing a little bump stop. It is all rotten, it was somewhere. But if it actually sat on a bump stop, it would probably bring it up half an inch or an inch and that probably would eliminate that clearancing issue anyways i'm thinking i'm hoping um so yeah we might put something in there but it's kind of offset and everything a little cattywampus so such is life we're going to carry on with the brakes um i did look online the kit was supposed to come with four bolts two per side the bolt in there of course they're 7 16 thread which i don't have any and uh i'm gonna say grade eight bolts because it is holding on the steering arm so missing that i can maybe try and get something tamara possibly bolt supply is closed on the weekend so and i mean 7 16 is kind of weird size so we'll see what we can do there but in the meantime we have uh all this other stuff i gotta check maybe this box did come in another box i'll just go through it before i toss it out but i don't think there's any hardware in it you'd think it'd be in this bag with all the hardware and yeah we have our simple disc set up so we'll do that we'll pack some bearings we'll throw the uh rotors on and we'll kind of work on the other side Let's see exactly what we end up with but yeah, pretty simple deal all right we've got the bearings packed so now we'll take these ah, rotors out of their packaging let's give it a quick spray in here just to make sure there's none of that uh, chinese dust now the back bearing so there's two these were not timkins you know you can't even get good stuff plop that in there you know what i should have done oh here we go we gotta knock this seal in so it kind of rest it on there let's get the proper tool which in this case will be a body hammer um you want to kind of knock it in slowly we're going to use this ten thousand dollar car's trunk 9,900, 9,800, 9,700. Oh, what is going on? It's a 
just tight fit. There we go. Sometimes you gotta bend it in. I feel good in the ears. So that's good. Where's a rag going to need on? Anyways, ah, we'll flip this around. Dump the top one in there. We'll just slide it on. The old spindles. And once it's on there, we'll break clean it off. Get all the, get all the goo off. But I'll, uh, I'll see you over there. I'm sure you guys have seen this a million times, but we'll just get a nice little seat on the ice cold concrete floor. Tell me in the comments I should sit on cardboard or a cushion or something like that. I never hear that enough. Okay. Got that on there. Kit came with everything you need. Little keyway washer deal. Put that on. Castle nut. Hmm. Hopefully this is... Looks like a shorty guy, but it is in the kit, so surely they wouldn't send me the wrong piece. I mean, what, what are we talking about here? I will say, when you buy the name brand, there is less uh, screwing around, right? So now I'll just kind of give this a little tight ski. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that nut, but set it, loosen it. I'm just going to give her a little snug. Eh. We'll go on the loose side. There you are. So, oh, I forgot the cotter pin. I'll jammy cotter pin on there. Give it the dust cap and we'll go. Man, that is right on the edge where that nut is going to be happy, but... Story of my life. Eh. You know what we can do is actually borrow another washer out of this one if it'll fit. Because that's the hillbilliness we're really into here. You know what? I'll show you. Yeah. So, you see where this nut is? Let's loosen that one. Or more. What? Does, you know, slip joint pliers. They always slip when you don't want them to joint, right? So the idea is, if you put your cotter pin, whoops, cotter pin in that hole, it'll cause this not to spin, but like, look, this is finger tight, and essentially, the thing will have to make a couple of turns. So what we'll do, is we'll take, if this will come off nicely, it may need a two-hand situation, but if there's a washer here, it's be a hassle. Huh? Eh? Washer. I can't tell you the amount of times I've had to do this on miscellaneous kits. Now, you can do a couple different things. Try and find a different castle nut that has bigger castles. You know, big towers, I guess they're called in the castle nut world. You could redrill the spindle and put the hole further inboard. Or, man, the one hand work here is pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. I'll leave that one in there. I guess it doesn't really matter what what goes where. Plop that on. Now when we put this deal. Did you guys see? I toss the camera finger to hand to hand. It's pretty look goofy how they're kind of drilled. Not that it really matters. Where's my pliers? How do pliers end up under something? So now, we'll put that cotter pin in, it'll be perfecto. So we'll run that for service. We'll double check that bearing, make sure it's good. Now, typically, when I've ever done uh, disc brake conversions, they have like a little bracket that will go on to the factory deal. Well, these ones have them cast in, so I'm assuming that the caliper is literally just gonna go in. The brakes are all there, I'll put a little anti-seize and like silicone -y junk so it won't squeal, anti-squeal. Put that on and by the looks of it, yeah, that's about it. We'll have to take those arms off at a later date but it'll be a, uh, it'll be a roller. Now, the thing I don't know about this kit, um, I don't know if I set it up for. You have to be aware when you're buying drop spindles, this is for tri five stuff, maybe and some more things, you have to make sure the spindles and the brakes match. Um, obviously, bracketry affects where the caliper is going to go. So you can't just put standard stuff on a drop spindle because nothing will line up in theory. 
Um, I think the rotor size actually changes. I don't know why, but I'm pretty sure that these are like 10 and 3 quarter or 10 and a half and a standard one is 11 or something like those lines. So be aware of that. Just make sure you're getting an all-in-one kit. And I don't know about this. We're fixing to find out right away here, but in the other kits I've gotten, they say they do not fit a 14 inch wheel, which is true, but with a slight amount of grinding on the uh, caliper, get the casting off, it will, it will put a 14 inch wheel on there and the ones I have used, but you're not putting sticky weights on it, I tell you that, uh, on the inside. So that's pretty much done, I'll put a cotter pin and the uh, cap, and we'll come back and see what these brakes kind of go on like. So far the kit's fine, I mean it is what it is, what are you gonna do? I guess you gotta complain about it a little bit more. All right, so you got everything on. Uh, the cap took a slight amount of hammering. That's a weird noise. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, professionals may use a socket to go on. I, I instead just uh, got around nicely. This here is our caliper deal. So it's your standard GM used forever single piston. Are we in frame here? You know what, maybe we'll do a little bit less firewall, a little bit more brakes. Um, let's, oh yeah, they are labeled R and L, so very simple there. Uh, pop those in. The, pretty simple, you want to make sure that the bleeder always goes upwards. It's got our little deal here for the line. It does have the soft line here. The only thing the soft line didn't come with, which is a bit of a pain, so we'll put that on and it'll run up into the factory deal. There's a little clip that holds it, which isn't the end of the world. I guess if you're doing a factory brake job, you may have that uh, nice fine piece. But for those of us who are uh, start with less than uh, standard amount, that's not quite the case. So we'll just kind of brake clean this all off. Make it nice and clean. Mm, this is pretty fine. I use this stuff. Brake silicone goo. I don't know. Just kind of. Any of the edges that are going to kind of rub against something. If I had some left in the tube. Wow, buddy. All the brake jobs I do, you'd think I'd be prepared for this. How is this going to go in? So let's give it a couple of, a couple of swipes. What, what's going on? Oh. It all comes pre-assembled. How about that? Can't even take this out. I wanted to. Uh, I also have somewhere. Oh yeah, I got it on the other side. Oh, these come pre-anti-seized? No. That would have just been nice. I gotta say, this kit's not bad. I've had... The Speedway kit's my favorite. I've done a bunch of those. Uh, I was gonna get another one, but they were out of stock going on here of the yeah, the lowering setup so I could have got the standard like replacement one but not the drop spindle one and that's I want a drop spindle you know we're, we're cool I just want to be like David Newburn anyway let's put that together that being said though actually oh, so I was on a tangent there I got distracted by work you know, it's either fast motion or I'm talking too much but put that together I bought a right stuff kit once and i was not impressed with it i actually thought it was complete garbage is this all the way in seems like it's kind of sticking out a little i guess that's it so in theory this should just Seems like a funny deal. I would have thought this would have been at the bottom. Is it possible to put it at the bottom? No. Let's just switch it side to side. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna battle this for a little bit. We'll get these in here. Oh, this isn't sitting flush. All right, I'm gonna get in the way of the camera. That's probably what needed is that last little click. Okay, so I had just a little bit of screwing around to do. This is the classic, no instructions, you get what you pay for. Be aware of that. This is the uh, brake pad that was on it. Um, and as you can see, 
you know, if it's if it's not following the curvature and it's on the inside, the squealer is on the top, which is usually on the bottom, but the door's open, that's creepy. Um, but anyways, I mean, whatever, it is what it is. Uh, but what happened was, it wouldn't fit in this little kind of groove there, so I had to get, so naturally if you want to put it that way, it goes the wrong way, so I had to go switch it with the other caliper, so whoever was putting this together was clearly just grabbing the boxes, put on the wrong side, not the end of the world. Um, whatever. So now we'll take our little pins that already has these little O-rings in it and we'll just slide them through the little bit of anti-seize or never seize on it. Oh, it's cold. You can see the breath. <laughs> Put those in there and that's basically locked together. Um, yeah. I have it right. Yep. Bleeders on top. So we're all kind of dialed together. I think that's as far as we're gonna get. Um, we'll put the, we'll fix the, we'll weld up the other side, put it all together in fast motion, because I mean, you've already screwed it up once. Why watch me screw up twice? Then I think we're gonna finish welding up uh, maybe the tow boards and in the tunnel and a few things like that, just because I do want to put a motor in here, even if it's just kind of temporary, but if it ends up not being temporary, uh, I don't want to get back in there and weld, because it's much easier to weld with nothing around there. So we'll just dial together. We'll be right back. But that's your standard GM brakes. They're simple. Look at that. It's all back together. Um, so we use a little bit of never seize on there. There are little O-rings in these uh, calipers and just be careful. I've had it before where, you know, the, you're trying to drive the pin through and you know, the O-rings, if you don't have never seize on them or something like that, the rubber in the middle will grab and it'll fold it over and push it out and all that. So just take your time. No big deal, I sprayed it all down with brake clean again, so it's good enough. I did not put the brake, the soft line on, because whatever, it's it's irrelevant. At this point, um, our, our goal is going to be putting those steering arms on, so we'll have to deal with that. But this is all kind of together. Um, oh, one last thing, another little Tri-5 tip, and maybe it's a you know, all-around tip. I believe, I don't know if this kit does it, but other kits, it will move your mounting flange, like your the wheel mating surface out three quarters of an inch versus drum. So just kind of keep that in mind. I mean, if you're going for absolute stock or you have some wheels that are tight or any of those sort or any of those sort of things, just be aware of it. Um, do your research, take your time, or buy the absolute cheapest stuff and grind till it fits, because that also works too. Uh, I'm gonna clean up a little and we're gonna go ahead and fix up this. Um, slightly damaged frame bit. I'll probably knock it back, weld it, and I'll probably just weld a washer on top. I'll have to clean up back here because I did. Uh, well, we torched them out. And then really we'll just put it all together real quick. It should go pretty easy. I will pre-clearance the spindles. So they'll go on like nothing. And then yeah, we'll do a little bit of weld the welders out. We'll, we'll finish welding up the floor pans. Call it a day. Pretty good. Oh, we'll put the wheels on. We'll make sure they don't fit because that's always important too.
like that. It's all together, everything is good. That one washer got a little gibbled, but we'll call her, call her good. It went all the way through and we tightened everything up. Everything's Loctited. It's good for now, like I said, I might down the road just change those bolts to a, you know, something I feel a little more confident. One at a time, super easy. Uh, the bolts literally just fall in and out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We got, uh, you know, all the, I think that's all the, the steering we need. And uh, ultimately you can mess with it down the road, but really, That'll be only set over a set of train tracks with no bump stops, but really I should just put a set of bump stops in here and that'll solve probably all those problems and I didn't have to grind anything. Uh, yeah. So I guess what's set up, we'll do the brakes real quick. I'll just slap those suckers on. We'll see if the wheels fit. Fingers crossed. Otherwise, we might have some rollers somewhere else or we take something off some other car, right? Danny's car's not doing much. And yeah, sit back down on the ground. So ultimately, it'll look the exact... Same way it did with all this garbage on it, other than there's uh, like $700 worth of brakes and suspension and all that. I gotta get shocks, I don't have any of those. And uh, I do wanna put the motor in, I think that'll be the next video. But put the motor in, set it in, set the transmission cross member, set the motor mounts, all that, tack it all. Then we can worry about the steering and make sure center link goes in. Typically in these cars, you gotta drop center link anyways, put the motor in, so. Just to solve that out, right? And this is Tri-5 Chevy. They're meant for Chevy Motors. Well, I know it doesn't look much different than it just did, other than it's all schwelded back together. So, I'm pretty happy. I feel like we've been making lots of progress, and I actually think we're about to go into overdrive here when it comes to even making more and more and more progress. I mean, it's only been hmm, two or three weeks, however we've been working this thing. And at this point now, it's got brand new suspension, you know, uh, basically brand new steering once we get all that together. Front and back, we need a set of shocks for it, but the rear end's all new bushings. You know, leaf springs, the rear ends, all it, it's all brand new brakes. Now, we didn't cover that, but that was a rear end that has all brand new stuff in it. We still have to plumb it, um, but to do that, I like to have the motor and transmission in, see where things are going to go. So, that'll be obviously the next video. Uh, motor and trans are going in. Probably have to come in and out a few times, but I do want to get that in. I really want to try and make a set of Big Brock Chevrolet fender wall headers fit on an LS. So, that seems kind of fun. Uh, I did order the patch panel just yesterday, the lower section here. That should be here kind of mid to end of next week, so I can get that taken care of. Man, everybody, everybody and their dog is like, can you just use a you know, rear door you know, section to fix that? Absolutely. The problem isn't here to here. That's just flat steel. I can deal with that. It's the lip that goes around. Now, we could screw with that forever, but the patch panel is $150. Not worth the screw around time so i'll cover that in that video as well we have a pile of welding to do but we have a pretty solid car at this point and i'm pretty happy with it i have a steering column for it i, I have carpet kit i gotta order a windshield but this thing's gonna like when the motor and transmission go in then we can kind of hang the fenders on we have a radiator for it it's really gonna come together fast uh all the little bits and pieces i don't know all these vents here, both the sides, that's for fresh air through the fenders. Whether we put that on or make a block off plate. This is where heater controls and all that are, which is kind of ugly in a 57 Chevrolet. It comes out and the blower motor's right here. I hate all that, especially with a fender well setup. I think what I'll probably do is block all those off and just put an auxiliary heater on the back of the firewall. So like, you know, on that side 
um, with just a couple of hoses running up for defrost. That's all you need here. Uh, obviously, we have inspections, but brand new brakes, brand new suspension. The rust is removed. Is it going to be ugly? Absolutely, but there's no rust. Uh, we'll put a new wiring harness in it, so we'll have headlights and all that sort of stuff. We'll have heater control. I mean, what else, what else is there? It's so basic. Well, the horn and the wipers and all that. We'll, we'll get all those dealt with, but it's a, it's a very solid car. I know I keep saying, oh, it's probably worth 10 grand. I'm not selling it to you guys for 10 grand. It's my car. And uh, I'm just saying what, what is available for you guys out there to do. And I strongly recommend you get out in the garage and start working. It's probably about 1 o'clock in the morning on a Friday. But uh, be an idiot like me and be in the garage for a little bit. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support and all the comments, especially on this build. Uh, it seems like the rattier the car and the more my suffer the more you guys like it for some reason. So I don't know how much rougher I can get, but uh, we'll keep going for it. And I will see you in the next video. I'm going to be cleaning up tonight. One last thing. One last thing. Stay with me. I know I'm talking lots. We just did a bunch of welding. I'm going to hang out for probably a half hour, do my cleanup tonight. So I'll be ready to go tomorrow. We don't want a fire. It was pretty minimal, and there's not a whole lot to catch there, but just really be aware when you're using welders, torches, heck, even a grinder. Just be aware of those things. You don't want to lose everything. See you in the next one.